All right, guys, we're taking off right where we left off before. We're going to be making this into, we're going to be adding the JavaScript in this so it actually works now. Uh, so it's nice and not too difficult to do. And um, the first thing I'm going to do is on my portfolio modal itself here. I need this whole thing to disappear, right? So the nice easy way to do that is just do a display of none. So we can make it disappear. Um, and now it's gone. Super. So what I want to do is I want to make it so whoops, I went too far. When I click on this link, it's going to appear. And then when I click my little close button, it's going to disappear. So we're going to start off the nice simple way. And then we're going to add in the animation to actually make it work. Um, so for this, I'm going to make a new JavaScript file. So a new file in here, we're going to call this one modal.js. I'm going to go to my index and I'm going to uh, let's just copy that one and modal.js and let's jump right over into the modal.js. Okay, so for this to work, there's a lot of stuff we need to do, um, but I don't think it's going to be too complicated. So the first thing I need to do is I want to make a variable for my portfolio container, which in this case is my document.query select selector and it's my portfolio whoops um portfolio items so let's save that um i think whoops there we go i, I just turned off or let's for now let's work on a big screen so you can see more of what i'm doing um so I have my portfolio container is my portfolio items. And if I go back to my index.html here, just so we can remember, because it's been a long time. Um, my portfolio items is this div, which has all of everything in it. This is holding everything there is. So if I shrink that down, all of my portfolio stuff is inside of there. So the reason I'm doing this is it's going to make it a lot easier to work in a lot less uh, intensive in general, because what I what this will let me do is I can make one event listener instead of having to make a separate event listener for all of them. Because um, we could definitely do a query selector all and look at all of them, or even just do a query selector for, for all my little buttons here. But then that would be five event listeners just for something like this. And if you had a bigger one that maybe you have 20 pieces on it, then you have 20 event listeners, uh, which you want to avoid in general. You want to keep your event listeners to a minimum. So what I'm going to do is portfolio, port, portfolio container. I'm going to add my event listener to there. And so we're going to listen for a click. Uh, and we're also going to record um, the event. So we want to see what the event is when we click. So let's do a little console log, console log of the event itself so we can see what's actually happening. So I'm going to save that without the um, the thing, um, the semicolon at the end there. Um, and let's go over to my console. So uh, modal.js line 3, 1, 2, 3. Whoops. Save. OK, um, so if I click anywhere, nothing's happening because the event listener is on this. So now I'm going to click on this and you're going to see it, it registered the click. And I'll click here and I'll click here and everywhere I click, it's registering where I'm clicking. So you can see that if I click in the middle here, its target is the fig caption itself. If I click on the name, the target is the H2 portfolio title. If I click on this, it's the portfolio description. And if I click on the link while well, we're jumping up, so let's also do a, we want to do a, a e prevent default, right? Because uh, we don't want the link to actually work like a link. So let's try that again. So now when I click on that, it's registering that the link, uh, the target is a dot portfolio link. So what I want to do is I want to, I want to make a new variable out of that. So what I'm going to say is that um, my uh, modal toggle. So what's going to turn my, my modal on? Or I mean, it's not really a toggle because it's only opening it. So whoops, we have to say const, const modal toggle is going to be equal to e target. 
So whenever I'm clicking on something, I'm getting a target. So when the target is uh, the closest, or we're going to take the closest port, port, portfolio link. So when I click on this, it's my modal toggle is literally just this one link here. So if I save that, let's do another console log, console log modal toggle. And I'm also going to turn, whoops, I made a mistake here. I want to keep this one and turn off my console log. Um, so when I click on this now, we're getting this specific link. And if I click on this one, it's giving me this specific link. They all look the same because it's the same markup in all of them. But whenever I click on one, it's going to select, it's going I'm, to, I'm taking that as my thing, um, as my modal toggle. And use your console log a lot so you understand what's actually going on. It's going to help you out. Right, so now what we can do is, if we're if the person clicks on something that's not uh, a portfolio link, we we don't want the script to keep running. We want to get out of here. So what I'm also going to do is just say if uh, not modal toggle. So if we don't have a modal toggle, we're going to return, and that just means the script will end here. So if we click on something. We don't have anything. We don't want, we're gonna have a whole bunch of stuff in the script. We don't want it to start reading through everything and trying to see if it should keep going. We want it just to end. So if I click on something and it's not there, end so we can save some processing power. And um, if there is a button, well, what do we wanna do? So if there is a button, and this is the part that might be kind of weird, I wanna select the right modal, right? So I have to select, I wanna select the modal that's inside of, in this case, we've only built this one out. So when I click on this, I want to make sure that I'm selecting the modal that's inside of this figure. So it's not hard to do. Uh, we just have to do a bit of traversal. So what I'm going to say is that my modal is equal to my modal toggle parent node next element sibling. So let's go look at my HTML quickly for this. So when I click on my link, I want to go to my parent node. So the parent node is the fig caption itself. So we're going from here to here. So we're going to my fig caption. And then from the fig caption, we're going to the next element sibling. So what's the next, the sibling to this, the next one is this right here, my div portfolio modal. So my selection is changing from, we're going from here to here and then selecting its next sibling, which is right here. So that's what this is, where the modal itself is the next element sibling to the parent of my modal toggle. Hope that's clear. Um, and so let's do another console log to make sure that's working, because things don't work when you don't console log, because you don't know why, um, and they just they don't work. So let's just make sure this is working. So this one, if I click on it, should give me portfolio modal. Now this one shouldn't work because I don't have a modal in here. So this should give me an error. There we go, no, there isn't one. It can't find anything because there is no next element inside of that one. Whereas this one has it. So if I click, it gets portfolio modal. Just to show you, it will get anything. So let's say this was called portfolio, uh, or actually I'll leave that one like that. Let's go to my portfolio item two. Um, and just after my fig caption here, let's just make a div called uh, test and I'll save that. So when I click on this one, I get my portfolio modal, but now when I click on this one, I should get test. Uh, or is it this one? There we go, there's my test. So this one's giving me more modal, and this one's giving me my test, because this is the next thing after here, and then we're jumping down to there. Um, so that's working, so we can comment that out and keep going. Okay, so we're getting there. Um, the other thing that we want, uh, so we want to be able to open our box. Yes. So, um, pretty much when somebody clicks on this, we want to open our modal, right? So we could just do, um, modal class list add, and we'll just call it, uh, is 
open. I'm going to save that. And let's go to my here. Um, I just have to add in here. If we have a portfolio modal which is open, its display will be block. So if I come here now and I click on this, it should work. And of course, it's not working. Uh, why not? Um, let's go to my inspect mode. And let's go find what I'm looking for. So section, portfolio items, portfolio item one. Fig caption. Oh, here it is. Uh, it is open. So it is working. Um, so let's just do a refresh on there. So I have my portfolio modal. And when I click on this, is open is getting added to it, but obviously it's not working. So I screwed up something in my CSS. You have to spell things properly. <laughs> Display block. Ah, there we go. And now it's open. Cool, good. It's open, but now we have no way of closing it. So we need to add a way to close it in here too. So what I'm gonna do, let's get rid of this whole thing because we really don't need it. Um, we wanna have my modal close button. So we can do, um, what should we call it? Let's just call it modal close. No, let's call it close button. Close button, I think that makes more sense. So my close button, in this case, is nice and easy. I can just say modal query selector and inside of there, we just want to look for my close button, which I think I called close, uh, close modal, I think. Let's go look. Um, modal close. Okay, so in this case, when I run this modal, it's, it's taking the one we've already opened. So I'm looking at this one that we've already selected. So I'm gonna look inside of that and find modal close. I don't wanna run a document query selector because that's gonna look for all of them and it's always gonna stop at the first one or I could do a query selector all, but in this case, we're already inside of this. We have a modal, so inside of that modal, we wanna select the close button. So it's only gonna be the close button for the modal that's open. And then when we click on that, we want to close it. So if, not if, um, we need to have a close button, add event listener, click, and when somebody clicks on it, we want to do something. Yes, uh, forgot my underscore. So we want to do something. So what do we want to do? We want to modal class list remove is open, save. So let's make sure this works. Fingers crossed on this one. Click, it should open. And when I click this, it should close. Awesome, hey, it worked. Really happy. Um, it's all good, let's scroll down and try closing, and it closes. There is that thing, but because this is open, we're hovering over the modal all the time, so that will only slide down after. Um, that's just, we're gonna have to live with that. Cool, so I'm pretty happy with how that's working. Um, if you're happy with that, that's great and you can stop right here. But if you want to know how you can animate it and make it fade in and fade out, head over to the next video because we're gonna, um, it is a bit more complicated to get that to work and I want to devote it, its own video to doing that. So I'll see you over in that video where we'll make it fade in and out.